Hi, in this video we're going to be showing you the Macarium Reflect backup software. So this is something you could use to create images of your hard drives, even an image of your operating system with your programs and your files included, or you could do file level backups. So we just did a video on how to do the image type backup where we actually made an image of the Windows drive with the programs onto a separate backup drive, and then we re restored it on top of the current installation of Windows and kind of overrode it there. So that way you could have a complete backup of your whole computer that you could use in case something goes horribly wrong. But one thing you need to keep in mind when doing that is your backup is only as valid as the date that it was made. So you got to remember to keep it updated if you want to use something like that. All right, so I'll put a link in the description. You could check out that video. But today we're going to be talking about file level backups. So I have the program open here. This used to be free, but now they charge for it. This is the home edition. Um, they have a subscription version and a standalone one-time purchase version, I believe. But they do have a 30-day trial if you want to try it out. All right, so I already have one file level backup done here with the documents and desktop too, I believe. Then here's my image file. So if I go to the backup drive, so here's my file level backup file here. It's MRBAK. And if I go to the image backup I made before, it's MRIMG. So that's how you can tell the file types apart there. All right, so now that I have this backup made, I could run it again or I could go edit it. Right clicking on it or click there. And you can see these are the folders that it's backing up here. And I could add different source folders if I want to add some additional ones or remove some edit the filters. So by default, it'll include the subfolders and you could check the box to exclude hidden files and folders and exclude system files. Uh, you could have some special include filters here. By default, it'll exclude temp files and backup files. And you could add folders to exclude as well if you don't want certain folders backed up. And then here's the location and the backup file name. I call this my files and it'll take this name here and add it to your image but it'll put an image ID in front of it, then my files with the kind of, it's kind of like a timestamp because when you do another backup, it'll add a one to the end of it. So you can see here I have my files backup. And then you have all the scheduling options and so on. So let's make a new one and actually run it. So click on create a file and folder backup. Okay, we're gonna do, let's say, just pictures. Okay, we're gonna put it in the PC backup folder. We'll give it a file name called pictures. So you can see it puts the word pictures in the backup image name here. And then you have the same options we just saw here. And then for your backup plan, you could do none, grandfather, father, son, differential, incrementals, and so on. So if you know how these work, these might come in handy. And then you could schedule it for the different types. And then once you have the schedules, you can edit and delete them. And then you have retention rules, and there's two types here. Apply retention rules to matching backup sets in the target folder, or apply retention rules to all backup sets in the target folder. And then you have different retention rules for different types of backups. And then purge the oldest backup set if it's less than five gigabytes. That's the default there. And you can run the purge before the backup. Then you have some advanced options. If you wanna change the compression level, file splitting, add a password to it, verify your image, change the prefix, add some comments to your backup, uh, the reparse points, this is more of an advanced option, backup set matching, and then what to do after the backup has been complete. The default is nothing. All right, we'll click next. Then you can calculate how big it's going to be. 46 files, 22 megabytes. Click on finish. Then you could run it now, run it in the background. You could save a backup definition file. So if you don't do that, it'll be unnamed. So it's probably a good idea to do this and I'll show you where you see that. So we'll call this pictures. All right, so now it's running and you could have your options here for what to do on completion as well. Okay, so that's done already. So now if I go back to the file here, you can see here's the pictures backup image file, BAK. Even though it's an image file, it's still individual files within this image. And I'll show you what you could do with that too in a second. 
And now you can see that name that we created during the setup here, actually right here for pictures. So this helps you keep track of what type of backup it is, otherwise it'd be an unnamed. And then from here you could schedule it, run it again, delete it, edit it, advanced options here again, and so on. All right, so another nice feature, if you go to Restore, you could click on Explore Image, and then you could pick your image file that we did from the other video or your file and folder backups. So let's just say, let's pick this one for example. It'll mount it with the available drive letter. In this case, it was F. And you can see there's the file backup. So here's the pictures. And then you could actually view the pictures from within the image file. So it just mounts the image as a drive letter that you could then view. You can't add to it, but you should be able to take full files off of here. So if we go like this, let's copy. Just like so. So if you wanted to get specific files out of a backup image, you could do that. And then when you go to existing backups, you'll see kind of the tree here. So if you have additional backups, they'll show up as sub backup files. If you're doing, let's say a differential backup, it'll show up as a different file underneath there. And then if you want to restore it, you click on restore and you could just go up to the main level here. Or if you want to go maybe just this folder or maybe just this folder, Original location, new location, replace all files, or only different files. Same with permissions. And then finish. I don't even think there's any pictures in there, but you see how it works there. And so now that's done. All right, and then you have your logs as well. If you want to see what's going on here for your backup jobs, you can come here. Then under other tasks, you could create rescue media, edit some defaults, export your settings if you want to import them to a different computer, check for updates, change the theme if you're into that. Then you have some backup options up here. Select a disk, backup windows itself, backup the files, backup templates, do a disk write performance, and so on. All right, so there is your basic overview of Macrium Reflect backup. So if you want to try it, like I said, there's a 30-day trial. So I will put a link in the description where you could download it and then you can see if it works for you. All right. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe.